to That's Just Good Teaching with me, Deanna Smith, where we talk about practical and easy to implement culturally responsive teaching practices that are actually just good teaching. Today is going to be the first episode in our Teaching Sustainably series that is going to focus on strategies that help you make this year more sustainable. I want to see more teachers returning back to the classroom next September. I wanna see fewer teachers getting burnt out, retiring, fewer teachers kind of like feeling like, oh, they can't wait just to get till Friday. And so I am on a mission to help you make that possible. And I'm gonna share some strategies that I think just make it a little bit more sustainable. And so this is just episode one. We're going to have a couple strategies and episodes in this little mini series that we're doing. Um, but we are going to start by talking about our sub procedures. The reason why we're going to talk about sub procedures is because a lot of teachers have been sharing with me that they actually don't take days off because it's more work to prep something for the sub than it is just to call out, which I totally get. But I'm gonna give you some ideas on how you can create a culturally responsive, yes, culturally responsive subfolder so that is at the ready to use anytime so that when you need to take that day off, you can take it off with no guilt, just be ready to go. And so we are gonna jump into that today and hopefully you will, at the end of this, be feeling good about taking the time that I know that you need. And so, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is going off of your pacing guide. I know, I know. Don't tell your administrator I told you to go off your pacing guide. But <laughs> sometimes we need to go off the pacing guide because what I find is a huge hindrance is that folks want to prepare for the lesson that chronologically comes next. And I think that that works for a planned outage. But if you have an unplanned outage, I don't know that that's the best way to go about it because... Number one, and I say this with love to all the subs out there, nine times out of 10, I find that I have to reteach it anyway. Like I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> I still have to go over it. Um, and at least in my area, like we're so low on subs. We are like the, the subs that have, you know, real experience, they're already taken for a long, long term, you know, um, outages. So typically we have subs that are very green, great, no shame in that. Um, but I, I would have to reteach anyway. So I like to instead have some plans that are prepared that I update quarterly that can be used for my class. Now, what I'm going to tell you is going to be applicable whether you are single subject or multiple subject. But my, and I know that there's tons of resources, like you could buy anyone's kind of sub tub planner thing. So I'm not going to go like over just the basic stuff. Instead, what I want to talk to you about is how to make it culturally responsive. That's my little twist. So firstly, we're letting go of the pacing guide. We're resigning ourselves like, okay, today the kids might not be having what they would actually typically have. Okay. Make peace with that. Move on. <laughs> because sometimes you don't know. And like I always say, if you don't take time off, your body will take time off for you. You might think that you're doing okay. And then randomly you'll just wake up and your body is like, no no, we're not going to work today. You know, totally shut down. Like, let me know in the comment section if that's ever happened to you before. But I feel like that's why we need these to be prepared because you don't know when that time is coming. So for those unplanned outages, a culturally responsive sub kit is what we're going to be talking about today. Now, the first thing that you want to do, I prefer like a envelope like this. This is actually, <laughs> I use this, but this is actually a um, computer, like a laptop sleeve. I prefer one of these because I feel like it's more spacious than a folder. You can also do a digital folder. It really depends on how you run your classroom. I would have already printed the actual copies because again, I'm only changing it quarterly and, and you don't even have to do it quarterly if you don't want to, you can do it less than that. Um, so I want the actual copies in here because I don't, I don't know the situation, you know, maybe they're not able to make copies. I don't know what they got going on. So I have the actual copies and I find that this is just as more spacious than having like a single folder that might not fit the copies. Some of you have like 32 kids in your classroom, right? So you have your folder and label it, do whatever, make it cute. If you do virtual, um, that is also an option. That's up to you. I'm going to talk to you about how you can make this virtual as well. I... I'm, I'm old school. 
I don't, I, I try to avoid computer time if possible. I know, I know. Um, so I, I don't typically do that, but I will tell you if that is how your school is set up, I will tell you how you can do that as well. So what goes into this bad boy? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure if, especially if you do like a daily slide or you have, you know, your entry task or whatever, you want to make sure that you've sent them that or they have access to that so that that is still ready to go on your smart board or your Promethean board, whatever, when the kids come in so that they, you know, see that there's some continuity. And so I like a do now, some sort of do now activity, of course, and this could be a spiral review. When I was, I was multiple subject, I always did a math do now because math is my favorite subject. <laughs> so I would have some sort of printed worksheet. Now, again, if you're technology, this is where you could sub it out for a procedure to get the Chromebooks and do iReady, you know, whatever, iXL, whatever it is. Um, me, again, I would have copies of the Do Now Entry Test, have the sub, have those out on the desk when the kids arrive. And it's purely review, very manageable. Do not throw anything new at them. Do not throw anything that's convoluted at them. I'm talking spiral review stuff because it just lowers the anxiety level in the classroom, okay? We're already gonna get them in, they're excited. Okay, great, I can do this, boom. You know, you do not wanna give them something that's gonna fluster them, because then they're flustered, they're feeling some type of way, they start taking it on the sub. Keep it simple, please. So that's the first thing, you wanna have your entry task. If you're a single subject, five minutes. If you're multiple subject, you can have this go a little bit longer so that sub can take attendance, get acclimated to, you know, whatever they need to do inside the classroom. So that is your like low barrier. Now, why is, how can you make this culture responsive? This is something that you can make culture responsive by pulling a math worksheet or a spiral review that, you know, includes different cultures, different languages, etc. Or this can just be something straightforward. I would, depending on your kids, you might not want to do word problems just if that's going to freak them out. So that's your first thing that you're doing, having that kind of set up for your entry task. Let's talk about what you're doing next. Okay, so after you have your entry task all laid out, again, this could be changed from multiple subject versus single subject. I like to start with some sort of activity that is related to, you know, whether if ELA is your first subject, you can jump into that or um, something that is, you know, giving them a little bit of an idea about another culture. This is how it can be culture responsive. I would go in onto New Zella, New ZLA, or Common Lit, whatever kind of um, online resource that you have for um, articles. And I would try to identify some articles that are talking about a different culture. So maybe in October, because um, Diwali's coming up and it's Filipino Heritage Month. Maybe I'm doing a tech set on Filipino Americans and that, or maybe I'm doing a, um, a tech set on Desi culture or, you know, it's Latino heritage. Maybe I have, um, some resources about Latino heritage, whatever it is. I have a collection of articles that kids can go through. This is your nonfiction time. And they're just reading those articles. And especially if you use Newzella, they can just do the quiz. And then there's some easy data for you from the day that they had the sub. And you can have the sub do this in whatever way that works with your classroom organization, individual and groups, et cetera. But they're learning something. So they're still doing that nonfiction. They're still, you know, they have to say the main idea of the article, you know, supporting evidence, et cetera but it's something about a different culture, why not? Then, especially if you're in the younger grades, I would pair that with a, a read aloud text. So um, let's say you're doing Filipino heritage, you have your text set, the kids are reading, and I, I use, Newzella is like my go-to, y'all, that's my comfort zone. The reason why I like Newzella so much is because it can go to the kids' Lexile level. So they are able to read like at something that's accessible to them if they're doing it on the computers. If they're not doing it on the computers, just print out like uh, what you think and then have a list for your students of who gets what article for the sub. And then after that, you can have a read aloud. And so I think it's fun to have the subs do read alouds, um, especially with the lower grades, but the big kids love read alouds too. So maybe I'm doing um, a read aloud. There's a really cute book. I think I actually might have it. Um, it's called When Lola Visits. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Okay. <laughs> There's a really cute book, uh, When Lola Visits. This is about a little Filipino family, right? So you can have a paired text, a paired fiction text with your nonfiction that you're doing 
uh, and your students are able to, again, learn about other culture, ask questions, okay? Then additionally to that, let's, you know, we love to watch YouTube, we love to watch a little video, go to Brain Pop. I bet you Brain Pop has, whatever culture you're doing, Brain Pop probably has a video that is somehow connected to that. So they're going, they're watching the Brain Pop video. My instructions for the sub, whenever there any video is, the kids have to write down three facts. I don't like to have them just watch a video just with no direction because I feel like they're not going to pay attention. Um, but a really low stakes kind of uh, task is three facts. So they're watching the video from Brain Pop, from Flocabulary, from Crash Course, from YouTube, whatever. Find a video that aligns to whatever culture that you're talking about. They watch that video. They come away with three facts. We have just done three, no, four activities in the morning, four high value activities in the morning that the sub is able to do that you are planning one time that is actually engaging that's not just sitting around doing a worksheet right this is what i mean when it, i say it can be culture responsive it can be so fun now bonus points if you really want to go out there you add a craftivity you add a craftivity to for that the sub can do something low prep for them to do afterwards but do you, do you see how you can kind of just take one theme or topic and really just build a lot of bonus activities in your day around it so all of that would be in this sub folder and again the reason why i say you could switch it out um quarterly is because then like let's say the first day is in September and you do Hispanic heritage or Latino heritage by the time February comes out around and you're taking another self-care day because you're taking care of you love that for you um they've already done this process before so you know what I'm saying so the kids are used to it so they're like oh this is what we do when a sub is here we do a cultural deep dive and we learn about another the kids are like, oh, we've already done this before. You know, this is our cultural deep dive. We do this every time we have a sub. Do you see what I'm saying? So to review, right, your day, you're coming in. They've got some sort of entry task that you've already printed that is ready. The sub is putting that out. It's a review, a spiral review. Then they're going into their nonfiction analysis or their learning, right? They're gathering information. They're reading an article from Newzella, from Common Lit, from whatever, something nonfiction where they're building a little bit of background knowledge about the culture, about the event, et cetera, right? Whatever that looks like. Then they are doing some sort of fiction exploration. This, is, this can look like the read aloud. We talked about a read aloud example, but it can also just be a short story. You can print off copies of a short story that's related to it, a fictional short story, and the kids are reading that as well individually in their groups, etc. Then you have, you know, your video. They're watching a video from YouTube. I mean, even PBS will have like, if it's um, a culture month, they'll have like the history of Black History Month or the history of LGBT Awareness Month, right? They have a little video that talks about the month itself. And remember your takeaway is they're doing three facts from the video. That way you're still having data and knowing like, okay, how much did they pay attention to this video? Because one thing that you still wanna do, even though the day is not gonna be on pace, that doesn't mean that you won't have data from that day. That doesn't mean that the day with the sub is just like a wash. Absolutely not. There can still be learning that takes place. So after that, they're watching their video and they're getting their their main facts or whatever. Then bonus points, especially if you, you know, depending on your age group and just like where they're at developmentally, there's nothing wrong with a little craftivity. I work with teachers all the time who want to include more craftivities, but either it's not on the pacing guide or they they want to do a craftivity instead of getting into the history and some as naomi o'brien um og in this work says some topics are too important for a craft and but when you have a sub is a time when you can bring that craft in so some sort of craftivity some activity that you have in here prepped and ready in your sub folder it's amazing right and so even just with that like if you are a single subject teacher i've given you way more than you could ever do in one class period you could probably get through like two of those things in one class period if you are a multiple subject teacher you can you know expand the times and then i would still like if you don't have um, something that's topical for your math block or for your science block that's okay but that ela block is still giving them that infusion of culture responsive um, instruction and like learning a little bit more about other cultures and other places and experiences. And then 
you can have, you know, your typical sub activities that you would have in there. Things that are very much review, things that are very much low um, barrier to entry, because what you don't want to do is do something that's um, that is going to elicit an emotional reaction or have a shutdown for some of your students. Maybe your kids never shut down. OK, and, and in that case, I love that for you. I'm more talking to my friends out there who have kids that will, um, you know, that'll see the first problem and then just be like, absolutely not and have a mental breakdown. OK, more like talking to those guys out there. Um, if that's you, let me know in the comments, because I know we've all we've all had that student. So um, that that is a way just to include some level of cultural responsiveness to your subfolder. And then again, you can switch it out quarterly or not um, and kind of share with kids and give them a little bit more of a taste of what it means to, you know, have an appreciation for other cultures. And it's just, it makes the sub day a little bit more meaningful, I think, and more fun. So those are my strategies for having a multi-cultural multi, um, or culturally responsive sub kit. Let me know in the comments like what you think, if you have tried this, um, what your current routine for subs are. And again, like I said, put it all in your folder and then it's good to go. And I hope that this tip can help to make teaching just a little bit more sustainable for you. If you want more strategies, and I know you do, make sure that you are part of our community. I share a newsletter with strategies every single Monday. So you'll want to make sure you get involved with that. The link is in the description the description box below for you there. And then um, also make sure that you're letting me know what else you would like to see in this sustainable teaching series, because I, like I said, I'm on a mission to support people like you who um, love this job, but maybe you're getting a little bit burnt out. So what other strategies would you like to see to help make teaching more sustainable? Let me know below. And yeah, welcome to the family. If you're new here, thank you so much for being here. If you're a returner, thank you so much. Share this video with a teacher that could use a little support and that's just the teaching.